At his home in Iran, a man is weighing up whether he should go and fight in a foreign conflict, along with friends who are already there. Eventually he decides to leave his children, bidding goodbye to Iran's mullahs too, who will pay him up to $600 a month to fight in far-off Syria. It's a recruitment advert, aired on Iranian state TV last year, but there's no mention of money here. Instead, an appeal to destroy Sunni jihadists, including ISIS, and defend the tomb of Zainab in Damascus, one of Shia Islam's holiest shrines. Iran has recruited an army of Shia fighters to prop up President Assad and to extend an arc of Shia influence from Tehran all the way to the Mediterranean, which has Washington and its allies rattled. Iran provides arms, financing and training and funnels foreign fighters into Syria. It has also sent members of the Iran Revolutionary Guards to take part in direct combat operations. South of Aleppo in Syria and the master of those operations is about to make a very rare public appearance. He's Qasim Soleimani, the commander of Iranian military missions overseas and credited with turning the tide of Syria's war. In this adoring crowd are Iraqi, Lebanese and Afghan fighters as well as Iranians, so he speaks to them in a mixture of Persian and Arabic though they are all fighting under the banner of Shia Islam. At first, Soleimani had sent the Assad regime these military advisers from Iran's Revolutionary Guard. This covert mission ended in disaster when they were caught in a cornfield by a Syrian rebel ambush. It was too late. All these men were killed. This footage was captured by Syrian rebels who then published it, proving that Iran had boots on the ground, though officials in Tehran denied it. Hezbollah was Iran's first proxy force in Syria. Fellow Shia fighters based in Lebanon, but funded and trained by the Iranians. Diverted by their leader from their lifelong mission to confront Israel, to save President Assad instead. In 2014, Channel 4 News was given rare access to the funeral of a Hezbollah fighter killed in Syria. Their losses were mounting in what had turned into a proxy war with Sunni rebels funded by Turkey, the Saudis and other Gulf states. So Syria's president made a plea for more help. The Iranians found that manpower sympathetic to the cause. Iraqi, Afghan and even Pakistani fighters, some of them Hezbollah lookalikes. It was cheaper than using Iranian men, there was no public backlash, and it was plausibly deniable too. Though by last year, Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, was openly visiting the families of those who had died fighting in Syria. About a thousand dead, according to one official. This religious war now too big to hide. 
جان خودشون رو سپر قرار دادند برای اینکه دست این بدخواهان و این خبیس ها به حرم اهل بیت نرسد and nowhere was Iran more focused than the battle for Aleppo. This jeep fighting on that front is Iranian armed and Iranian built. Russian airstrikes pave the way for victory, but it's believed up to 8,000 Iranian backed fighters took the lead on the ground. In December, their commander, Qasim Soleimani, made another rare appearance, this time inside the recaptured city the architect of plans to extend Shia military power across the Middle East. In a mission which, at its most daring, could secure a land corridor from Iran through Iraq to Syria and the Mediterranean Sea. Though the Americans see this as dangerous Iranian meddling. Iran is the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism and is responsible for intensifying multiple conflicts and undermining U.S. interest in countries such as Syria, Yemen, Iraq, and Lebanon, and continuing to support attacks against Israel. Yet for the Iranians burying their dead from a distant war, that war is about challenging the ambitions of their Sunni rivals, Saudi Arabia and Turkey, and their allies, the Americans. And any battle in the name of the Shia faith is by extension a battle for the survival of Iran itself.